What's up everyone and welcome to another Bitcoin market update. In these videos you will learn how to use technical analysis to forecast price movements in your favorite cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and others and also see where we are looking to buy and sell these crypto assets ourselves. Before we get into Bitcoin, I just want to give a quick shout out to our uh, course that we have on Lutheria.com that you guys can check out if you like these types of videos where you're learning technical analysis and how to generate consistent income trading assets like Bitcoin and others, then I guarantee you will like that course as well. You can check it out. You can learn everything from candlestick analysis to volume analysis to trend analysis to a ton more. And it's very similar to these videos where we're, it's very interactive. You have me explaining to you in the corner how things are working on the charts. And then we also break things down in slide format for you. You get unlimited access to all of the course content um, for one for a one-time price. Um, so you can get 20% off that course by using the link in the description below. And yeah, check it out. So let's dive into Bitcoin here on the weekly time frame. So since the weekly open here from this last week, we have drew down to actually go below the $29,100 level. And we went down to 28,000, about 800 here. So about 28.8. Um, and you can see since that point, we've risen pretty significantly. So if we look at from the low of um, where we were up to where we are now, it's already about a 13% increase um, off of that bottom, which is pretty interesting because that's happened over the last like uh, day, not even uh, like pretty much over the last like 12 hours, I would say. Um, so pretty significant rise in price after this dip. So pretty good um you know, movement here from the bull side. We'll see if this ends up holding or not. Um, right now, we went down to 28.8, and this low is at 28.815. So we went down to 28.796. So we, we dipped down right below both this low and this low, and now we're trading above that. So that's very good news for the bulls. This could potentially be a liquidity grab where we're grabbing the liquidity below both of these lows, and then we might see a rise in price thereafter. So we will see what we end up getting. But if we go to the daily time frame, we still have this resistance level potentially setting up here to be concerned with. And this resistance level, well, it's not a resistance level yet, but if today's daily candle closes below this low right here at 34,592, which is pretty, you know, a ways away from where we are now. It's about, um, it's, so it's 6.19% away. So we'd have to rise a pretty significant amount over the next four hours for us to close back inside of that uh, blue zone. If we do not close back inside of it, this will turn into a resistance zone that I will look to go short on, um, at least for the first test. And then we will see what happens thereafter with the price action that we get. Um, but that is something that I am looking for uh, as of right now. The other thing to keep in mind before we go to the lower time frames is the monthly. If we look at the monthly, we can see that we did break the low of the previous month at 29.1. And so now we'll see potentially declining bear volume as we set this uh, low for this month. So we will potentially be looking to come up in the month of August, or I'm sorry, July, and then maybe August, um, as we potentially set our monthly higher low. Now, if we set our monthly higher low um, right here at 28,796, then, you know, an easy trade there is once you break the, um, or I'm sorry, uh, bottom fishing play, so you're waiting for the low to be set here on the monthly time frame. You're anticipating a low being set and you're waiting for the rise thereafter. So the potential bottom fishing play here is you could wait for um, on something like the daily time frame for today's daily close to give you indication that, you know, we're looking pretty bullish down here with the potential for a um, uh, bullish divergence here. You can see that the RSI right here for today is at 3483. And you can see that this is, you know, above every other low that we've set on the RSI on these previous lows right here. So if we look at this low back here from March 19th, this is lower than this low, even though this low went below it. So the RSI is showing us a divergence, 
versus what the price is telling us. So now if we look at the price, here's another example. So right here, we have a low at 30,982. Here we have another low at 28,796. Potentially, it's not validated until we break the high of the previous day. Um, but what we have here is we have potential for a bullish divergence with a higher low in the RSI and a lower low in price. So this is what we consider a bullish divergence, meaning that we're gaining strength on this drawdown versus this one. So you can see the increasing bull volume here as of right now. Um, one of the important considerations when you're using the RSI um, is this kind of 14 candlestick um, framework to kind of frame divergences. So typically, um, well, before I get into this, I just wanted to say we actually have a video where we break down the RSI um, so you can learn how to use this in different trading and investing scenarios like this one um, to make informed decisions. And you can check that out um, right here. We'll put a link for that up above. But what I was saying was usually you take divergence is only considered valid if it's within 14 candles of each other. So the lows in this case, they need to be within 14 candles of each other. So if we count from here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then this is 14. So we're right on the edge of if this is considered a divergence based on that kind of rule of thumb. Some people don't use that and they just say, you can see clearly that this is a lower low than here and on the RSI we're much higher. So they consider that a, a divergence. Um, so it depends on you know what you wanna use. I usually use the 14 candle rule just because it's, it kind of filters out some of the other signals that you might get that might not be very tradable signals. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. So this is the area that I would look to go short on if we do end up closing below this level. This will end up being a strong resistance zone for price. That's also confluent with the Super Guppy indicator here as well as the Ichimoku cloud. So that uh, is what I'll be looking for. The counter to that, the counter argument is that you know we're going down to grab the liquidity below both of these lows and now we're gonna go and just go crazy, um, which easily could happen because the, bear, the sentiment right now is pretty bearish. So we'll see what we end up getting. We have five days left on this weekly candle though, so it's gonna be challenging for the bulls to potentially you know come down and then just have a crazy run up, in my opinion, past this daily um, level right here. I think it's far more likely, you know, that you look at the increase that we would have to have to go right through this zone and stop me out of the trade. Um, we would have to appreciate about 30% um, without forming a lower high in this zone somewhere. So I think we're going to set a lower high somewhere in this zone. That's my personal bet that I'm making. And it's consistent with the different zones that we already talked about, which were um, this zone right here, which is something that we I traded before. So if we look at this and we pull this over, this is inside of that zone. And this was something I already traded right here and got a nice, like, I don't know what this is. Like, a, it was... about a 15% on spot. So about, you know, 30% 30, 30 plus on uh, 2x leverage. So this is going to be a nice play here as well, hopefully, uh, that I will be taking over the next couple days if this closes in the next four hours um, below this zone. You also, so this is one piece of confluence here, this resistance level, right? Because we've closed already below this once. So if we close again below it, it's, it'll turn into resistance again. It was support right here, but it'll turn into resistance if we close two candlesticks below it. Then you have the Ichimoku cloud, which is in the most bearish scenario that it can be in. So you're really looking for any opportunity to go short again. And it's kind of difficult to go short down here when we're so far away from the Tenkin as well as the Kijun. So um, that's something to consider. And then also the Super Guppy, which is trending downwards now. And these EMAs are, the longer EMAs are starting to get expanded. So, so those are the different kind of things that I'm looking at there with that. And just remember everything on this channel is for educational purposes only, is not intended as financial advice. So do your own research and make your own decisions, folks. So let's get, dive into the um, four hour time frame, a little bit lower time frame here. So we talked about this level right here, and as 
<laughs> as anticipated, uh, this level held absolutely like a champ. Um, you know, but the, the, the thing that was kind of weird here was we closed back inside of it here. So it wasn't actually valid resistance based on my personal opinion. I usually require two candlesticks below it for it to be resistance, but it was really only one candlestick below it here. And then when we retested it, it was clearly, you know, this was the trade right here from top to bottom. This was about a 13% move. So, um, that, you know, has been pretty significant. Now here's another bullish divergence. So here's a low right here, and then here's another low. So this is a lower low in comparison to this one. Now, if we look at the RSI, we can see the RSI is making a higher low. So this is bullish in the short term, this is bullish. So that's good news for the bulls. Now the bulls with this increasing bull volume are going to need to try and follow this up. You can see this closes in 25 seconds. We're getting this longer upper wick and we're also getting declining bull volume. So it's not good news for the bulls to try and in the next four hour candle, which is the final four hour candle of the day, to close back inside of this dark blue daily zone up here. So if we do not, remember this dark blue zone turns into that daily resistance. So that's something to consider. Um, the only other thing I'll say is the Ichimoku cloud is now in the most bearish scenario that it can be in. And like we talked about in the other video uh, yesterday, I believe, we talked about this red line, the Kijun, gradually coming inside of the blue zone. And this is your ultimate resistance uh, short zone right here if you're a cloud trader. So the cloud's red, price is below the Tenkin and the Kijun, Tenkin's below the Kijun. Um, so this is the most bearish scenario in terms of this trend following indicator. So the entry on this is actually the um, Kijun right here, which is right now at uh, $35,059. That's right inside of this blue zone. So uh, what I'll probably do on my entry is I'll put one of my asks on the bottom of the level right here, which is right around 34.6, and then one of them on the Kijun level right here. And then my stop loss is going to be above the blue zone up here. So then we'll see what we end up getting um, over the next coming days. If this trade ends up becoming valid, I anticipate with the declining bull volume, the longer upper wick here, and the Ichimoku cloud being in bear territory, that we probably will not close back inside of this blue zone in the next four hours. But who knows? Maybe we just have rocket ship whales come in that are just like we're going to the moon and they'd push this thing up so we'll see what we end up getting there um the last thing i'll say is the divergences so when you're when you're looking at divergences like this potential bullish divergence here what this can do is you can see a it'll it'll lead to an increase in price because the um people are pricing in the fact that this low is weaker in terms of bearish momentum than this low so uh, when you break the high of this daily candle tomorrow, this will end up becoming a valid bull, uh, bullish divergence on the daily time frame, which will push the price likely into this dark blue zone, which will potentially fill those orders. So um, that's currently what I'm seeing right now on Bitcoin. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you like this video, Give it a like down below and subscribe for future educational content around cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. And check out our global uh, Lutheria Telegram channel. There's a link for that in the description below as well. You can join a community full of crypto enthusiasts, traders, investors, um, and a ton of other people in there that are learning and growing together. So you don't have to go about learning and growing in the crypto economy by yourself. So we all aggregate our collective knowledge and insights into one area, and then everyone can benefit as a result. So this is what we believe in at Lutheria. We believe in the community learning experience. So check that out if you think that that would be something that you might be interested in. It is free, uh, free for everyone to join, and there's a ton of resources in there. We do community chats. We, have, uh, we post news articles in there. We post different trading ideas that we have. We post different, um, you know, just general comments on the market, what's going on, thoughts, projects, a ton of other things. So check it out, and until tomorrow, onward and upward.